scammers are continuing to target CSU students. Hear what fellow Rams have to say. Plus, the renovated Ram Skeller is almost here. All this and more tonight on CTV News. Hello Rams, I'm Caitlin Conley. And I'm Elizabeth Ruiz. Thanks for watching tonight. Police are warning CSU students about the ongoing phone scams. Callers threaten students with things like arrest or suspension unless the student pays a fine. Others have been promised grants and scholarships. Scammers are now spoofing caller ID, so it appears that CSU PD is behind the call. CTV spoke over the phone with a student who fell victim to the scam. I got this call from this number in New York saying they said I got a government grant. To get that money, I was like, so you guys just going to mail it out to me? And they're like, oh no, you need to go get like a, a green dot debit card. Sternholm then went out and bought a debit card. The caller then told him to increase the limit of the card and receive his award. He needed to load $280 onto the card. Next, he was told that his credit score was too low and that he had to pay $900 to bump it up. At that point, Sternholm was suspicious and talked to his dad. His dad then looked the number up online and discovered it was a scam. Sternholm tried to get his money back but discovered the scammers had already taken $260 from the account. In the end, he was only able to get back $20. It kind of makes me second guess, like, people when they, like, bring up great offers or, you know, offers that are too good to be true. CSU PD warns students to not share personal and financial information over the phone, even if the call seems legitimate. If you receive a call from someone claiming to be a law enforcement officer demanding money, hang up and contact the local authorities. One of the major benefits of going to CSU is our very own pub, the Ram Skeller. While the LSC was getting renovated, the Ram Skeller was also getting a makeover. It will now be new and improved with a six-barrel system for students to brew their own beer if taking one of the classes. The Ram Skeller used to have games, food, and beverages for those over the age of 21. And students don't have to wait much longer for the pub to open. Much of the LSE has already been renovated, and along with the new food court, study lounges, and offices, there is one improvement that is anxiously being anticipated for the 21 and above crowd, the Ram Skeller. CSU established the Ram Skeller in 1968 and revamped it again in 1999 after the floods. During the construction, a small station was set up outside of the bookstore for those of legal age to still buy a beer. I asked students at the temporary Ram Skeller what they are expecting from the pub. Oh, I'm expecting maybe a little bit more light, uh, maybe more games or bigger. Uh, we have some bigger crowd probably, though, I hope. The new and improved Ram Skeller is anticipated to have its own brewery, where some beers will be brewed by students during a hands-on training class designed to help educate the next generation of brewers. This beverage would only be sold at the Ram Skeller and give students a chance to work with a small six barrel system to brew their own concoctions. Altogether, students are looking for a place that they can all hang out like they used to. Uh, hopefully something similar and you can actually buy pitchers of beer and just kind of sit around and enjoy yourself. Although we do have a dry campus here at CSU, we are lucky to be one of the few campuses in the nation to serve alcohol within our own student center. Make sure to check out the Rand Skeller this fall if you are over 21, because it should be up and running before the semester ends. Every year, a committee comprised of students, faculty, and members of the Alumni Association selects six CSU best teachers based on numerous nominations. For the 2013 through 2014 academic year, Mike O'Reilly was one of the chosen six. <laughs> CSU assistant professor Mike O'Reilly teaches 300 and 400 level classes about structures. Six KSI, and that's totally coincidental. With a bachelor's degree in construction management from Virginia Tech and a master's in civil engineering from the University of South Carolina, O'Reilly has found himself in many engineering jobs, including a small engineering firm in Fort Collins. The big dots at the top are actually rebar. After receiving a call from the university asking him to teach several classes, O'Reilly has now been teaching for 14 years and is a full-time assistant professor. If you lay on the bed in the Super 8 and looked up, you can see the seams between the Holocaust legs. While he enjoys teaching students, he never thought he would be recognized as one of CSU's best teachers. I'm very honored, especially since it was based on 
student nominations and uh, recommendation of the head of the department. So, you know, that made me feel pretty good. O'Reilly considers his classroom a relaxed environment with not a lot of high pressure. He thinks the key to working engineering type problems is visualization and repetition. I always think when my students are sitting out there that I was in their shoes once and uh, I remember how confusing it was for me and I try to make it less confusing for them. O'Reilly's favorite part about teaching is the one-on-one -on -one interaction with students. He even has review sessions at night where students can stay as long as they want to work on problems and ask questions. He just wants us to learn, that's about it, and he isn't like other teachers where he doesn't care about you, he generally cares about the students that he has. So. O'Reilly thinks he is a fan of students because he sees himself as their peer and he thinks they are comfortable with him because he treats them like equals. Besides his dedication to his students, O'Reilly still keeps his hands in carpentry by building things such as decks, boats, and even coffins for friends at his church. Weather anchor Liz Prossi is joining us now. Hey Liz, great weather we're having. Yes, Caitlin and Elizabeth, it was another beautiful day today and it kind of felt like summer even though Tuesday marked the first official day of fall. Now today we did see temperatures get up into those upper 80s, but tonight they're going to cool down to those 60s. If we look out across the Grand Junction is going to be about 60 degrees, Telluride 44, Vail 42, Denver 56, and then right here in Fort Collins we will get down to 53 degrees tonight. But currently it is 73 degrees and we do have a slight breeze out of the southeast with those winds 5 miles per hour. It is a calm, clear evening. So if we take a look at your evening planner, we will see it's 73 right now, but it's going to cool down to about 61 degrees tonight. And it's going to be clear, so if you want to take this chance to go out and go stargazing, tonight would be the night. Thanks, Liz. We'll be up after the break to finish the rest of her forecast. Plus, sports with new sports anchor, Grace. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Welcome back, Rams. I'm meteorologist Elizabeth Prossi with your latest weather forecast. Now, for tomorrow, we can expect a very similar story to what we saw today with temperatures in those upper 80s and sunny skies. Looking out across the state, let's see, Gunnison's going to be 75. Alamosa is going to heat up to 79, but look at Pueblo, 88 degrees for tomorrow. And then here in Fort Collins, we're going to get up to 86 degrees. Now, looking at your Friday planner, what we can expect as you head out to class? 58 degrees, relatively nice, and we're going to heat up to 86 degrees tomorrow afternoon, so it will still be comfortable and warm when you go cheer on our Ram soccer game tomorrow afternoon. But there is a different story ahead for this weekend. Those clouds are going to start rolling in because we have a cool front coming through. So taking a look at your seven-day forecast, we can see temperatures are going to be in those upper 80s, but as the cool front comes through Monday, look, those temperatures are going to drop into the lower 70s for our high, and we're going to cool down to the 40s for our overnight lows. Pretty chilly for this time of year. As you can see, with this cool front, we are going to have a chance of rain. Now, your best chance of rain is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. So have your rain jackets out, but overall, it's going to be a great, great weekend, so enjoy the weather, Rams. Thanks for the update, Liz. New sports anchor Grace Reader is here. What's happening in the world of Rams sports? Thanks. This Saturday, CSU football travels to Alumni Stadium, where they'll be facing 3-1 opponent Boston College. It's not looking good for the Rams, as the Eagles are one of the most balanced teams in college football. Their offense shuts down both the running and the passing game, ranking 11th in the nation for total defense. They also pose a threat on offense, ranking 3rd in the country in total rushing yards. Senior quarterback Tyler Murphy is a huge double threat, contributing to those rushing yards. He ran for two touchdowns last weekend against Maine. Murphy's incredibly agile and will definitely be a threat for the Rams' defense. For CSU to pull off a victory, Garrett Grayson needs to be able to communicate with his offense effectively to get Boston on their heels in what's going to be a very loud alumni stadium. And the Rams' defense is going to ultimately need a miracle. This game will be played at 10.30 on Saturday morning. Speaking of football, 
For two and a half years, CSU has been trying to build an on-campus stadium for the team and for all field sports. By Thursday, October 2nd, CSU needs to have raised $110 million. This was the compromise made with the Board of Governors two years ago. Unfortunately, only $50 million was raised, which is significantly short of $110 million. Tony Frank sent out an email today updating students about the progress of the project and has his thoughts about fundraising. He seems to think that discussion about the stadium is far from over and that while he does not think one million dollars, one, sorry, $110 million can be met with more time, a stadium could still be possible and the money with that could also go to renovate Hughes Stadium. He'll be proposing this to the board instead of a budget proposal on October 2nd when their meeting is scheduled to take place. While you won't be able to watch on a new, at a new campus stadium, women's soccer will be home this weekend at the Lagoon. The Rams soccer team has a 2-6 record, which doesn't sound promising, but their two wins have both been at home. They'll be playing the UNLV Rebels on Friday, who have a record of 5-2 and 1 tie. The Rams are going to need to take advantage of their home field and are also going to need to take shots on goal. Rebels have three freshman goalies. Their starting go goalie is Jordan Sally, who has a .757 save percentage. She's a remarkable athlete, but she can certainly be scored on. This defense doesn't allow many balls into their backfield, so CSU is going to need to take advantage of shot opportunities, and forwards are going to need to be bold. So go support them on Friday at 4 o'clock and on Sunday at 1 o'clock against Nevada, Nevada. The CSU cross-country team will also be participating this weekend in the St. Paul, Minnesota meet on Saturday for the 29th annual Groy, Roy Greich Invitational. This race is dedicated to a previous cross-country and track coach who is now a teacher and has been a teacher for 50 years there. The race will be held at Lace Bolstad Golf Course, which is going to be grassy and somewhat hilly, slowing down both the men and the women's teams. Um, the teams are expected to rank well in the Mountain West Division this year. Elizabeth and Caitlin, back to you. Thanks, Grace. Coming up, a free film screaming, screening for students, plus where to get a free lesson on being the perfect zombie. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Pooter Wilderness volunteers have teamed up with the CSU's Warner College of Natural Resources to hold a free screening of the film Forever Wild on Friday, September 26th at 7 at night. The screening will be held in the Behavioral Sciences Building, and the film showcased local heroes who have worked to protect the wildlife and places they love, while also celebrating America's wilderness. The screening is in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act, which created the National Wilderness Preservation System. Pooter Wilderness volunteers will be at the screening selling limited edition posters celebrating Colorado wilderness to benefit their nonprofit organization. Still planning a Halloween costume? Do you want to be the scariest zombie in town? Life of the Party Costume Store, located on South Mason Street, will be holding a free Zombie 101 workshop. Learn how to dress the part from flesh wounds to the perfect zombie hair and teeth. Life of the Party Costume Shop is the official headquarters of the Fort Collins Zombie Crawl, so this weekend's workshop is the perfect opportunity to prepare for the crawl. The Zombie 101 workshop will take place between 4 and 7 in the evening. For more information, check out Life of the Party Costume Shop on Facebook. This Sunday is the annual Fort Collins Pride Fest. Stop on by the Washington Park between 12 and 4 in the afternoon to celebrate Pride with friends and family and enjoy a nice picnic. There will also be LGBT entertainers and activities for all ages. In addition to the Pride Picnic, there will also be a Pride Variety Show held at Avogadro's number Sunday night starting at 6. The show will include live comedy acts and DJs. Visit GLBT Colorado for more information. The festival is put on by the Center of Northern Colorado, which provides members of the LGBT community with access to important programs and resources. Groups of very talented dogs will be competing Sunday morning at the 19th Annual Doggy Olympics Fundraising event held at City Park. 
the pooches will compete in a variety of competitive events, including frisbee catch and 25-yard dash. The event will also include sponsor booths and hands-on activity demonstrations that people can try out with their dogs. The doggy Olympics are to help by the Larimer are held by the Larimer Animal People Partners HIP to promote positive human animal bonds. Money raised at the event will help the LAPP fund community educational programs and support local pet-minded organizations. The Doggy Olympics will kick off just before 9 in the morning on Sunday. For more information, visit colapp.org. So do you think you might head over and see the dogs? You know, I really love dogs. I have two goldens at home, so I think it'd be great to see more dogs and get to hang out with them. Yeah, me too. I live really close to City Park, and so I think, you know, if it's nice weather, that I will definitely be good. go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for tonight. Check out the rest of our stories at Collegian.com. Also, check us out on Twitter at Collegian C and Collegian Central on Facebook. Have a great night and weekend, Rams.